Tactics is all about choices. The choices you make and the choices you make your opponent make. Last time, we looked at four strategies based on the four possible strategic positions and the goal of each one. Strategy lives in the cognitive domain. It's all about thinking and planning. Tactics lives in the psychomotor domain. It's all about feeling and doing. Strategy is very general. Tactics is very specific. You could say that strategy is the why of the way you fight this opponent. Tactics is the what and the when. Uh, tactics is where you consider all the aspects of this particular opponent. You evaluate their balance, line, focus, and distance, their stance. How do they move? What's their rhythm? What moves do they like to do? What tells do they have? Are they left-handed or right-handed? The more you know about your opponent, the better you can choose your tactics. Now, I, I want to be clear that when I say you choose your tactics, I don't mean you think about it, scratch your chin, and duh, what should I do, Ma? Tactical choices are made in your hand, not in your head. In your body, not in your mind. Your eye sees, your hand feels, and boom! Just like that. Your conscious participation is not required, thank you very much. See, tactical choices can't really be made in advance. They have to be made in the moment. Oh, sure, if, it, if you have an opponent who habitually makes big, wide, early parries of cart, you could say to yourself, yeah, this guy's a sucker for a one-two. And you might go ahead and one-two him all night long. But there's always a possibility that he might do something else. So you can only decide to do a one-two in the moment when he actually does make that big, wide, early parry of cart. If he accidentally does something else, you have to be able to roll with that just as easily. If you're the longer fighter, you're an outfighter, and distance is your friend. You might maintain your point in line, keeping your shorter opponent at the end of your point. To attack, your shorter opponent has to get past your point, and you can make that very hard to do. When they say that the best defense is a good offense, this is what they're talking about. Now, if you're longer and stronger, you might blast him with straight attacks and six with opposition. If you're longer and weaker, you might choose a one-two or a doublé. In either case, you always recover with your point in line. If your shorter opponent beats your blade, immediately replace your point for a stop hit or a counterattack and step back. You parry only if you absolutely have to. Now, if you're the shorter fighter, if you're the shorter fighter, you have to get inside. You might beat the longer fighter's blade out of the line, seal a march, and attack. If you're stronger than your opponent, your attack can be direct. If you're weaker than your opponent, you can anticipate his parry and repost and ambush him with a parry counter repost by disengage. The specific tactics that you choose will always depend on your knowledge of two things. First, what is your opponent most likely to do in a given situation? How is he going to respond to a particular stimulus? And second, what is he actually doing right now? Now, the best way to find out what your opponent is most likely to do is to surprise him and see what his immediate inclination is. You suddenly blast a false attack to the high inside line, aiming at his chest. Bam! What does he do? Does he do nothing? Does he flinch a parry? Does he parry something other than cart? <laughs> many, many people will habitually parry cart because it's the parry they learn first. It's the one they know best. It's a, it's a sort of natural kind of a movement, like swatting a fly. And for some, it's the only damn parry they know. If his instinctive parry is cart, you might build your tactics around the feint to the high inside line, 
one, two, double, one, two, three. Yeah, you get the idea. But always, always remember what your opponent does when he's surprised. To know what your opponent is actually doing right now, you have to be in the moment. You have to feel the steel. Here's where your balance, line, focus, and distance really come into play. Let the action guide you instead of trying to do the opposite. Let go of your ego and intentionality. You, you ride the action of the fight like, um, like a sailor, like a ship gliding along on whatever the sea does under you. You don't fight it, you accept it and adapt to it. Never get into a fist fight with the ocean. She's the longer, stronger fighter and uh, she's at least three weight classes heavier than you are. Until now, we've been considering the four possible strategic positions. But there is a fifth possibility. What if both fighters occupy the same position? That is, what if they're equal in reach and equal in strength? Well, in that case, the fight isn't about strategy. It's all about tactics. Because they're equal, both opponents want to be on the same distance and both are able to give and take punishment. A tactical fight will be decided by which fighter makes the best choices at any given moment. How do you make good tactical choices? Well, you can start with these three premises. You can only think about one thing at a time. You can only do one thing at a time. And you can only move in one direction at a time. So at any given moment, you have to choose what to think about, what to do, and which way to move. It's axiomatic that an opponent who is centered cannot be hit. If you want to attack successfully, you have to make him lose his balance, lose his line, lose his focus, lose his distance, or some combination of those things. At the critical moment, you have to make him think about something else, do something else, or be someplace else. Here's the key, so pay attention. Write this down. Tattoo it on your forehead. In any given moment, there are two possibilities, two choices. Your job is to present your opponent with two choices, and no matter which one he chooses, he loses. Let's take one possible tactical thread and, and follow it for a piece. Now this is just one example. Let's suppose you advance and engage your opponent in sixth. Now there are two possibilities. Either you find the blade, no, you don't. You'll know which one happens because you'll feel it. Tactics is tactile. Let's suppose you don't find the blade. Well, there are two possibilities. If you don't find the blade, either your opponent is attacking or he isn't. It almost doesn't matter which one. If he deceives your sixth on the absence, you immediately beat cart and thrust. If he's attacking, your beat thrust will function as a parry and repose. Touch. If he's not attacking, well, then you attack. You turn your beat thrust into a beat disengage attack. Touch. Let's suppose you do find the blade. Well, there are two possibilities. Either the line is open or opening, or the line is closed or closing. If the line is open, you make a straight attack. If the line remains open, touch. If the line closes, you disengage attack. Touch.
Let's suppose the line closes and you continue forward by disengage. Now, there are two possibilities. Either your opponent parries or he doesn't. If he doesn't parry, touch. If he does parry, well, there are two possibilities. He makes an immediate repost, or he doesn't. If he makes an immediate repost, you parry his repost and counter repost. Touch. If he doesn't make an immediate repost, then you continue your attack by remise, reprise, or redoublement, and touch. The important point here is that regardless of what choice your opponent makes, he ends up being touched. <laughs> now wouldn't Sophocles just love the hell out of that? I want to mention two tactics in particular because, because I like them. <laughs> the counterattack and the countertime. My first teacher, Mr. Logan, used to say that for every move there's a counter move. For every counter move there's a counter counter move. For every counter counter move there's a counter 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 move move. Except for the counterattack. For the properly executed counterattack, there ain't no counter move. Your opponent is committed to and focused on his attack, and you can't go in two opposite directions at the same time. The counter attack is an offensive action made during your opponent's attack. You have to avoid that attack, and at the very moment he thought he was going to be hitting you, you're hitting him. I'll give you an example. Your opponent attacks with a lunge to your heart. You slip anti-clockwise and thrust to his face. Not a damn thing he can do about it. Here's another example. Your opponent leads with a straight left. Your head, right? You slip outside and simultaneously throw a short left to his solar plexus. And there's not a damn thing he can do about it. To execute a counterattack successfully, you have to read your opponent accurately and your timing has to be exquisite. Being able to counterattack systematically is one mark of a really, really good fighter. The other tactic I love is the countertime. I love me some countertime. Strictly speaking, the countertime is any action against your opponent's counterattack. So if he's making a counterattack, that means you have to be attacking. Sort of. You make an attack or preparation of an attack to invite your opponent's counterattack. And when he counterattacks, you spring the trap. Here's the classic example. You initiate an attack incorrectly by moving your body ahead of your blade. Now, you can't be obvious about this. It has to look like a mistake, which it normally is. But in this case, it's not a mistake. <laughs> it's bait. Your seeming mistake invites your opponent to counterattack, to put his point in line. And when he does, you execute a prise de fer touch. Here's a counter time that's my personal favorite. Now, generally speaking, we use counter time to describe any kind of a trap or ambush. The beauty of the counter time is this. You let your opponent do what he wants to do 
what he likes to do, what he should do, and you use that against him. Now, counter time can be used in any strategic position, but man, it is the bread and butter of the shorter fighter, and how sweet it is. So how about some sage tactical advice to take home with you? Um, well, there's a ton of good tactical maxims. Let's see, um, action beats reaction. The hand is quicker than the foot. Um, if it works, do it again. If it doesn't work, stop doing it. <laughs> All good advice. But here's three ideas you can embroider on a sampler. Number one, you cannot defeat an opponent whom you do not understand. Number two, always make it easy for your opponent to do what you want him to do. And number three, and most important of all, you cannot use any tactic for which you did not have adequate technique. We'll talk about technique in part three.